Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we started with this pendulum that had a steel wire with some initial length at a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. It had a period of exactly two seconds. And steel has a linear coefficient of expansion of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade degree. Now, of course, there's different kinds of steel with different kind of uh, coefficients, but let's take this one for this particular wire. And in the previous video, we found that the ratio of the final length to the original length, since the temperature went from 25 degrees to 15 degrees, and that would be at 15 degrees centigrade, so we started at 25 degrees centigrade, went down to 15 degrees centigrade, it will shrink the length of the pendulum, meaning that the pendulum will swing faster, and so the, the, fin the final length over the initial length will be 0.99988, and so you have a faster rhythm on the period, and the ratio of the change in length to the original length was a negative 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So now we're asked to find how many seconds per day will the clock gain or lose. Well, notice this. If we have 86,600, so the number of oscillations of the pendulum is equal to the number of seconds in a day divided by the number of seconds per oscillation. Okay, so the number of oscillations we need for a day is the number of seconds in a day divided by the number of seconds per oscillation. So we're going to do that initially. So in this case, that's equal to 86,400 seconds in a day divided by the number of seconds per oscillation, which is two seconds per oscillation, which means there will be 43,200 oscillations per day. Now, what happens when the pendulum begins to swing faster? Which means that it will take less time to do 43,200 oscillations. And so therefore, well, you'll have the clock running faster. So faster oscillations, meaning you'll, you'll do 43,200 oscillations per day faster than it would be in a normal day. And so you'll actually gain ahead. The clock will gain uh, some time, so the clock will gain time due to the faster oscillations. Okay, now we need to find the new period. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we know that the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Now, G doesn't change because we're not changing any altitude, but L will change. So we can see, we can see that the uh, T nu divided by T old is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L nu over G divided by 2 pi times the square root of L old over G or final and initial. So that means that T nu divided by T old is equal to the square root of L final, that's the new L, divided by L initial, which is the old L. And since we have the ratio, that means that's equal to the square root of 0 0.99988. Let's find out what that ratio is. So 0 0.99988, take the square root of that, which will be equal to 0 0.99994. Okay, so that's the relationship between the old period and the new period and the old period. The new period will be that much different compared to the old period. Okay, which means that the period, the new period, will be equal to the old period times 0 0.99994, which is 2 seconds, times 0 0.99994, so times 2 equals 1.99988 seconds. So now we have the new period 
of our pendulum because we've taken it from 25 degrees down to 15 degrees, makes oscillate faster, so instead of two seconds, it'll be slightly less than two seconds. Now, how much time will go by when you have 43,200 oscillations at this new period? So time, I should write time new is equal to 43,200 oscillations multiply times 1.99988 seconds per oscillation. So let's multiply that number times 43,200, which means that the new time on the clock after that number of oscillations is going to be equal to 86,000 395 or yeah 394.8 seconds so the clock will have done 43,200 oscillations in only 86,394.8 seconds instead of the normal 86,400 seconds so it's going to be faster by the difference so take 86,400 seconds and subtract from that 86,394.8 seconds and let's go like that so we don't get confused so the delta delta time is going to be equal to 5.2 seconds and that means the clock will run faster by that many seconds per day because the temperature changed from 25 degrees centigrade down to 15 degrees centigrade. So you can see for a clock to run correctly, you can't change the temperature by much or it'll have quite a bit of an effect on the clock and the time. And that is how it's done.